Hello everyone, my name is Miss Waltzer and I teach multi-arts at Wedgwood Elementary. Multi-arts means music, theater, and dance. Today I'm here to teach you guys about building a set model. Things you will need. A shoe box, or some sort of box. Paper. Pencils, pens, markers, things to draw with. Hot glue, or regular glue, or tape, or anything that can hold things together. More than one if you want to be fancy. And lots of random craft supplies. All about sets. What is a set? A set is a bunch of props and scenery pieces that create the setting of a show. They help create the mood and the feel of the show and also tell the audience where and when we are. First, we are gonna focus on three different types of set pieces. Flats, platforms, and the fly system. A flat is kind of what it sounds like. It's a flat piece of either plywood or canvas that creates a background. Sometimes flats will have other details on it that give it a little more dimension. But sometimes it's just a painted piece of flat wood or canvas. Flats are usually used because they're easy to move around the stage. They can also be hooked up to the fly system and flown in and out. Platforms are almost kind of like tables, though they usually vary in height. The reason we would use a platform is to create a more visually interesting picture. Actors can stand on top of them, you can put other set pieces on top of them, and it gives the whole stage a bunch of levels to play with. Usually you can't bring a platform down from the fly system. Though they've done it before, just not usually. The last system we're gonna talk about is our fly system. On the side of most theaters in the wings, you'll see a series of ropes. That's called the fly system and the rails. Those ropes are connected to lines, which are long metal poles that hang up way above the stage. And those ropes can have the lines come down and go back out. You can hook up flats or other things to those lines so that they magically come in on their own and magically go out on their own. Usually directors and set designers will use this to do a fast scene change. It takes way less time to fly something in and then fly it out than it does to move around a bunch of set pieces on wheels. Remember, if you see rails and a fly system in a theater, please don't touch them unless you have been trained. The fly system can be very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. When designing a set, someone has to first come up with a front view and a floor plan, sometimes known as a ground plan. The point of a front view is usually to give a visual of what the set is gonna look like from the audience's perspective. It's used by the directors and the other artists and actors that help create the story. Floor plans are what the set looks like as if you were looking at it from the sky. Hmm, what does it look like down there? The floor plan or the ground plan is used by the builders. It gives distance. How far away from the back curtain is that platform? How wide across the stage is that flat? Where are the flies going to come in? The floor and ground plan help the builders build the set. It also helps the stage managers figure out where the set is going to go and how it's going to move in between scenes. That's important to know. You don't want someone hitting their head on a set piece. How I like to draw a front view is by drawing a rectangle. Then I make it three-dimensional and use that as my stage. Remember, the front view is from the audience's perspective. So you wanna draw it as if you were sitting in the audience and seeing it on stage. I'll give you a second to trace my version of the front view. If it's not perfect, don't worry about it. Just draw a rectangle and make it three-dimensional. Then you have your stage.
Remember, a floor plan is what the set looks like from the sky. While doing this, I want you to think, hmm, is my object a flat or is my object a platform? They're gonna look different from the top. I'll give you a second to draw your floor plan. You don't have to fill this in yet. This is just for you to trace, so you have it to draw later. Remember, your floor or ground plan should have the same set pieces that your front view does. This is just to show where on the stage they are and how far apart they are and how big they are. Really think about what things will look like from the sky. A table looks very different than a flat. After the floor plan and the ground plan have been created, then it's time to build your set model box. This is just a 3D version of the floor plan and the front view. Sometimes the set designers will even build little penny people that are used to show the scale of how big the person will be compared to the set. Here are some fun examples of what other designers have done. These are from a variety of different musicals and plays, like Les Mis and The Fantastics. Notice they use lots of different levels and different designs. They even have things hanging from the fly system. Here's an example of how a set designer designed their set, made a model box, and then built it and added lights. Look how cool that is. My set model is gonna be a scene from A Year with Frog and Toad. I drew their two bedrooms next to each other on a lily pad in the middle of the water. This is my front view. Remember, this is what the audience sees. I added lots of details like beds and rugs, even wallpaper. I also tried to add as much depth to my picture as I could. Next, I colored in my front view. This is important because the set builders need to know what colors the set's gonna be. It's also important for the lighting designers and the costumers to know what they're gonna be lighting up. After my front view is done, I have to get started on my floor plan. I really need to think about what I had drawn. I have a lot of flats that are hanging and flying from the sky and a lot of flats that are on the floor. Remember, a flat from the top looks kind of like a line. So I made sure that I made them lines. I also thought about my platform. What would that look like from the top? And the answer is it looked kind of like a upside down rock. I made sure that when I was done, I labeled everything. So I remembered exactly where it is and what it is. Now it's time to get crafty and make my set model. I took an old shoebox and I glued paper to create that background and that floor. I cut out all the shapes I would need and glued them on, making sure that I paid attention to the depth that I had in my floor plan. Once my background was done, I had to get started on the platform. I cut out a bunch of cardboard in different shapes so that I could glue them together to make that little lily pad. I covered it in green to make it the right color. Next, I glued on a thin strip of cardboard to give it a platform and raise it off the ground. Then I added the decorations, the wallpaper, I made little beds and little stools and little carpets and glued them all onto my platform unit. The last thing to do was to put my platform unit on my set model. Voila! A flat is a flat piece of wood or canvas or other materials that creates a background. It is called a flat because it's flat. Platforms are a table-like unit used to create levels on the stage. A fly system is a set of ropes that allow flats and other scenery to be flown in and out. It makes scene changes a lot faster. To make a set model, you first have to think about what the setting of your story is. When and where does your story take place? Create a front view of your set. This is how the audience will see it. 
create a floor or a ground plan. Remember, this is what the set looks like from up top. Is your set piece a flat or a platform? How does it look different when it's on the floor or the ground plan? Get creative to build your model. Use whatever materials you have. Now create your model box. Here are some examples from other students. Goodbye everyone, have fun creating!